You are listening to the B2B Marketing Mindset with Pete Monfrey and Bill Lowell. We want to help demystify marketing to reduce risk, drive more and better opportunities and grow your business. Are you ready to master marketing? All right, let's get into the B2B Marketing Mindset on this fabulous Thursday. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. I, uh, I'm, I, we shouldn't we shouldn't be uh, faking it. It's like 100 degrees where you are. It's 100 degrees where we are. <laughs> it's a little well, crazy, right? Well, let me just correct that. It's more than 100 degrees. Wow. I think uh, Satan himself just left the state. He's he's yeah. done. Uh, you know, every week we go live on LinkedIn. We're helping businesses make better decisions and lower the risk. What is the risk? The risk is going to you're going to blow all your money on stupid marketing stuff or shiny object syndrome or interns or whatever. It's kind of risky these days. So we want to just share our knowledge to help you make uh, better decisions. And that might not be higher than us. That's OK. But just so you don't get hosed. Uh, today, we're talking about the do's and don'ts of hiring interns. OK, we got three reasons uh, to work with interns and three ways to jack it all up. Um, I think I've jacked it up maybe 12 ways at least, but you can find more of these reasons and mistakes and more episodes at B2BMarketingMindset.com and every streaming platform on the planet. Um, so I have to say I've had a lot of interns over the years and, and generally they have not worked out very well uh, with just a few rare exceptions. And you were the head of the internship program at University of Wisconsin, right, Whitewater. Uh, based on my notes, and I'm thinking, you know, I just look, I looked at the notes that you said, and I'm thinking, ah, I think the problem might be me. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little so, bit about that. Sometimes, you know, that you know, I also, I also handled all the Disney internships for uh, many of the universities in Wisconsin that, where the kids would go through the University of Wisconsin Whitewaters, and we would go down. You mean that Disney would there. hire them? Oh yeah, we they had. For there's quite a there's quite a college program for. Uh, internship programs throughout the Disney organization. Very, very successful, that. very, very good. So, uh, but anyhow, yeah, so I've done a lot of internships and in my business, we've we've hired well over 20 internships and the majority of them have been good or successful. So maybe the difference, Pete, is that we're just, our company is just naive. We don't have a clue what we're doing. <laughs> maybe you guys do it. You know, that's that's the problem. We just kind of think, oh yeah, everything's going great. But meantime, it's maybe not, you know. Uh, I think there's just a ton of factors, and right. and you know I, I speak somewhat in jest, but you know it's so we've just have had many dozens of interns over the years, right? And yeah. some have worked actually pretty well, and others not. I think the majority not, um, but it could have, you know a lot of it is us and how we manage the interns, how we choose the interns, mm -hmm. you know. And so we'll, we'll talk a couple of those things, but there's actually a lot more of these reasons and we just don't have time to cover them all today so we kind of picked right. our top three and top three mistakes that we've made uh and everybody makes and um let's jump into it so we're we gonna do the the reasons to do it first or the reasons yeah. or the mistakes okay. no we're gonna so do the reasons. the reasons to do it because we'd like to start on a positive note uh, uh you are a positive guy oh no i'm not uh build the talent pipeline this was my favorite one out of them, but uh, building the talent pipeline. Tell me you know, why that one made your list. Well, this one, and, and for those of uh, the individuals that are listening out here, this is a really, really important one. It's like, you know, you get a chance to get an intern into your organization. You get a chance. It's kind of a recruitment strategy, or it should be a recruitment strategy. You get the chance to actually try before you buy. And so I really like that concept. And uh, along the same lines, the interns get the chance to try before they buy. So it's really a win-win. And I think that that's really key. And one of the things that we found is 85% of companies utilize internships to hire full-time employees. So think about it. You know, you have them in your organization. You're actually watching them, seeing them develop. Are they going to be a good fit or not for you? Are they going to be working? Are they going to have the talent set that you have. And you, you mentioned it just a minute ago, Pete, which I think is, is really important. And that is, you know, I don't know if we did a good job hiring or whatever the case is, at least with an internship, and we'll talk more about this, but um, you get the chance. You get the chance to see them in action. And if you did a bad job of hiring somebody, you know, the good thing about internships, in my opinion, is there's a start date and there's an end date. So, you know, True. so that's, that's, 
it is a great pipeline and I know a lot of companies are using internships wow. to recruit full-time employees. I think right now it's particularly salient because um, I'm just hearing it everywhere. It's just so hard to find people now. It also could be because your job requirements and your salary are, are completely opposed. But um, but whatever the difficulty is, this is a route, right? Especially if you want people who are, and by the way, there's different levels of interns. You know, a sophomore intern exactly. is going to be a lot better than a grad student or uh, different than a grad student uh, intern. Right. So depending on what you what you need, um, you want to pick them right. Um, but yeah, this is, you can have them, you can mold them in the way to do the things that the way that you want to do it, um, or your yeah. company wants to do and whatever your method is. So, um, yeah, let me, let me give you one more benefit about this too. If you do it right, it should be a lot less expensive too, because think about this, you, you're already investing the time to train them, to develop them, to do, you know, to try to get them to do the right things. Um, but you know, that training will, you know, it's hopefully it'll be continuous, but the good news is you've already made that investment. And so then if you do hire them full time and it's a successful hit, it's going to be less expensive because now you've just reduced the time for them to come up to speed. They're already trained. It's it's really kind of a win win uh, situation. Well, and just just to be clear, I mean, we um, I asked you the other day, we were talking about this topic and I said, you know, do you pay, you know, interns and we've always paid interns. And so. You know, there's some cost, but um, and we'll I think we'll cover that a little bit in in, uh, in the program a little bit later. But there is a cost in your time, but it's it's more like an investment, I think. So um, and so I think that's a that's a good point. So uh, you can build your talent pipeline, try them before you buy, and uh, or uh, date before you get married, uh, exactly. so to speak. I don't know. Is that politically incorrect in this day and age? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Let's uh, go that, to... <laughs> I'll leave that for you to, to, to give us that. But like I said, too, and, and it's so important, it also works both ways, meaning that the, in, the intern gets a chance to see if it's for them as well, too. And I think that that's right. you want you want a win win. You want somebody that's going to be wanting to work with you as well as you wanting to be you know hiring them. So. Absolutely. And, and uh, I think one of the points we, we, we that didn't make the program, but will be on uh, B2Bmarketingmindset.com is is that. Uh, you know, there's this there's this compatibility thing, and then there's the way that you manage them and mm -hmm. and planning for that, and it's just a lot more than just bringing in a young person and turning them loose. And so, right. um, and and that's how how you can, you know, if you're not going to put the work in, you probably aren't going to have a good result. And I I know as a you know year, 20 years ago as a growing agency, you know, it was hard to put that time in, and I think we maybe didn't right. do that as as well as we could have. So. Um, you know, but that's that's actually a really good point. And we'll talk about that as one of the caveats of, you know, maybe reasons why you don't do that. But you're so right. I mean, especially like and I remember those days for you and for us. I mean, you're working 18 hour days. It's like it's very difficult to even have the energy to to try to give to somebody new or whatever. So, you know, you're, you're right. It's difficult. So if the listeners are thinking about hiring an intern and uh, they don't have the time, you're going to hear us talk about that. It's just not a good idea. Yeah, and you know, you keep me honest because you were actually there uh, when I tell these stories. So uh, way back in the day. So uh, interns bring fresh perspectives. Um, so new ideas, viewpoints, insights, uh, new ways of doing things. Uh, it 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 can sort of reinvigorate the team's creative thinking. You know, um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I'm I, I'm a little torn on that one, but yeah. I, I love it. You know, I think one of the things that you just need to do is you need to be very clear with the interns because sometimes they come in and they give a fresh perspective and, and sometimes it's really, really good. But, you know, there's not you're not going to you're not going to accept every idea or some ideas are not going to be something that might be doable and they might get frustrated. So, you know, but from from the perspective of bringing in new ideas, new perspectives, it is really interesting. Sometimes you'll get something where you've been working on a problem or a, you know, a project or whatever, and they give you a different perspective. I got to tell you one quick story. <laughs> I hired, I hired an intern. This goes back about 15 years ago, but this, this person was extremely bright. He was a lot of fun, but his name was Matt. And I said, Matt, I'm going to take you out to a client assignment, but you really, you know, other than introducing yourself, you're just to sit and observe, say nothing, do nothing, you know? 
And so we were up at actually a major client and they were getting into all kinds of gyrations about stuff. And there was a whole team of people and no one could make a decision and they were going back and forth and Matt lost it. He said, this is absolutely crazy. Why don't you just do this? And he just told them what to do. And everybody kind of looked around the table and said, wow, that really makes sense. That's what we should do. And, and I was like dying because I'm thinking, oh no, he's talking. I told him not to talk. Yeah. But he yeah. really came up with a great idea. So sometimes those fresh perspectives are good, but timing could be another issue, you know? And Matt, if you're watching, uh, put the, in the comments, you know, uh, what, you know, what you, what you thought of your internship with Bill, wouldn't that be fun? I'd be a surprise yeah. if he was watching, but uh, the fresh perspectives thing, it, it comes with youth uh, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes, but, you know, even an intern can bring some objectivity to the, yeah. to the business. Right. And, you know, I think where the the trouble comes in sometimes is you, you still have to you, you have to listen and you have to evaluate if it is a good idea or not. Because, again, I mean, I remember when I was young and I, you know, I thought I knew all the answers and I right. didn't. Right. And so but it is surprising sometimes, you know, we've kind of going through that right now. We hired a, a young man and uh, it started as an internship, but very rapidly he's become the uh, our podcast producer and the, the, the speed at which he learns has been the biggest surprise for me. It's not what I'm used to from interns. I think that comes back to kind of hiring the right, the right people. Um, and then, and you, you know, know, having that test period, I guess. I, I think that that's really important. And you just, you brought up another thing, you know, like we've had interns and we have one right now that and she's very, very good. But um, some people claim, you know, that they're really good at something. So let's say that we're not as good at technology as we think maybe somebody fresh out of college is going to be. And so maybe they come and they do, you know, a really good job of talking to you about that. Sometimes it's true and sometimes it's not. You know, right now we've got somebody I think that's very good, but there's sometimes that they say that they're really good with the technology, but you need to test it and you need to make sure that what they're doing digitally or whatever they're trying to accomplish for you is really, really true, you know? Um, well, and here's yeah. what I, you know, so one of the, this comes up a lot where, hey, you know, we're gonna hire some young guy because boy, those young people know social media inside and out. Here's a test, okay? Here's a test for mm -hmm. employers out there. Have them open business.facebook.com and give mm -hmm. you a tour of it, okay? If they cannot Love give you a idea. tour of it, then they probably, you know, it's just more than posting, you know, or, mm -hmm. you know, if they post a lot of selfies of themselves, you know, here I am in the break room, you know, <laughs> that's not really it. And so, um, but on the other hand, boy, they're familiar with some of the platforms that before TikTok became a business platform, which it actually is, has become that now, you know, mm -hmm. the young people were all over TikTok, uh, Reddit, uh, you know, Discord is another one, you know, I mean, we're old farts. And, uh, you know, I like to, you know, we've, we've kept up to speed, but it's, it's those surprises, I think that they bring and that that comes under, I think, the perspectives uh, angle. So I think that's a really good one. Um, yeah. Let's go to the next one. Community oriented organization. So this is kind of like an external, almost kind of a PR thing, right? Am I getting that right? I think so. I think so. You know, so, you know, a lot of times in the PR business and the marketing business, people talk about being a good corporate citizen, you know, and we can define that in so many ways. And, you know, obviously in academia, they talk about it in a different way, but, but I think you nailed it, Pete. And that is, it's really a PR thing. It's, it's showing if you hire an intern, it's one, you're building a partnership with maybe a local university or somebody. So you're building relationships, you're giving back to the community, you're hiring, you're making an investment in some of the youth. So, you know, all of that is really good, especially if somebody starts saying that they worked with Clarity or they worked with Business Direct. I mean, it, it's giving back. And I think that that's really uh, an important part of the, I, I think it's important part about being in I, business. You know, you're giving I back. too. And, and both of us were teachers at the university level, you long, much longer than me. But I taught at University of Wisconsin. I taught at uh, MATC, Milwaukee Area Technical I think College, it is technical college. Right? Yep. Yep. Um, yep. And uh, we discovered some really good talent there. And it was a little bit rough, rough diamond kind of stuff. I mean, not always. Some of them were really advanced. And we're like, you, yep. you're in, you know. 
And boy, when we were a, when we were young, we were a small company. We were growing, trying to grow, and going all through that. It was a godsend for us. I mean, it was fantastic. But you know, we did have to close the gulag down. You know, just because yeah. it wasn't good PR. Um, but uh, no, we didn't really have and, a gulag uh, unless. You know, actually, wanna... I don't know if you remember this, but the Onion was upstairs from our offices, well, I do. and this I was do. before they were the Onion. It was a yeah, bunch of hippies up there smoking weed, yeah. Yeah, and exactly. uh, you know it was wild, right? They just becomes yeah. a huge deal. Um, but That's, I just thought that, that was their way of doing whiteboarding. They would all smoke the weed and then get creative. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, They're, our dogs would go yeah. up and visit them. That was always fun. But go oh, ahead. That oh. was kind of an aside. You know, the along the same lines with this, this is kind of a valuable lesson that I when I was the intern director. I would share things with certain people. So like a new employer might come into town or somebody that wanted to build a relationship with the university, but many times they didn't know what to do. And so what they would do is they would just send us a job description or say, oh, we're, we're hiring and thinking that everybody was going to jump on it. And I would, I would tell them, I'd say, look, unless you build a relationship with me, who's going to, you know, I know these students inside and out. They come to see me. We have seminar. We do all kinds of things. You know, I can do a really good job of matching you with the right intern or the one that has the right quality. But if somebody's just not willing to make that commitment or just sending something, I mean, yeah, it is still a good giving back to the community, but I don't think you're, I don't think you're leveraging it as much as you possibly could. So I guess my point is when you are doing some of this, you really, do have to think about making a commitment and, and and getting to know who's in charge and where you can get some of those good interns. I think that that's really an important point. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it feeds into to one of our mistakes. So that's page one. Uh, okay. And All right. uh, wait, I have notes. Um, let me. Uh, that, that's too bad. I've been just winging it off the top of my head. So <laughs> no wonder you sound so good and I don't. Oh, wait a minute. I'm screwing it up here. No, wait a minute. Uh oh. All uh -oh. right. So we're going to, we're going to switch to mistakes. I don't. Yeah, I think I think risk mitigation is a slide that's a mistake. So let me let me choose yeah. another one. But that um, was last week's podcast, you know. Wait a minute, what's happening here? All right, there we go. Wow. I don't know what's going on. Um, developing. So our intern will edit that out probably later. Except for all anybody watching live, you get to see all of it. So that's fun. Um, and if you're listening out there in podcast land, you can actually see the video mistakes at b2bmarketingmindset.com. And do me a favor, if you are catching this podcast, whether it's live or whether it's a, a, a rerun or whatever they would call it these days, share it. Share it to your timeline. If you're on LinkedIn, you just hit repost. You don't even have to do anything. Just boop, done. We really would appreciate that. We want to spread the message far and wide. Uh, not developing clear objectives. Um, boy, doesn't that go for just about everything? But in this case, I think really like this, actually that might be the one that is the, you know the reason you fail or or not i yeah. think that's a huge one a I, I really i agree with you and you know what you hit that right between the eyes it's not just for interns it's <laughs> i see this with many companies when they don't do this with their employees if you don't know what's expected of you if you don't have some clear definitions if you don't have a good understanding of what you're going to be doing or what's expected of you it's going to be uh, it's going to be risky to to your risk mitigation slides. So, <laughs> right from so, last week, the slides from it last works. week. It, it was a actually, carryover. It, yeah, it, it works. Um, and and probably objectives was one too. I don't know. I can't even remember last week. But um, yeah. you know, listen. We're when we pontificate about these things, I don't want to come off like, hey, we have all the answers. You know, honestly, we have some of the answers because we've made these mistakes, right? I mean, this is how we figured it out. I, I don't remember reading anything about this. It was really just doing it again and again and trying to get it right. And I think I gave up for quite a few years and now we've sort of re-embraced that. And, and I wanna you know, also say, we don't turn the interns loose on, on client work. Um, it's really cool that you brought Matt into the client meeting, right? But it's like, hey, yeah. you know, be quiet, sit down. Um, and I think that's fair, but what we found is the intern that we have now really help us with our work and our internal work because the our company is one of our clients right and it's a lot more forgiving to make a mistake you know because and especially if people know me they're like hey that's a mistake yeah, of course that's we know him that's he makes mistakes uh, but it it takes a little of the risk out of it they get really good training um they see how we work and you know we're at the point now i don't rem i don't know how long is 
How long has Enzo been with us? Um, three or four months, maybe. February. Five, since February. And we're really at the point where now we're going to be giving him much more challenging uh, assignments, strategic, creative type assignments. And I had to tell him, I said, don't worry. Like you're going to, the first thing you're going to think when I give you this assignment is I have no idea what to do, right? That's the point, right? And so it'll be interesting to see how he navigates that. And I'm, I'm saying, hey, you know, if you got a question, ask chat GPT. It's hey. smarter than me. Um, so I got to tell I, you a funny, I got to tell you a funny story. You talked about bringing uh, somebody to a client or doing client work. So I, I had an intern, this goes back about, you know, five years ago, but we had an intern. <laughs> I took him out to one of our clients. He was a wealth manager. And, you know, we sat down and we were going through the whole process. Once again, I said, don't say anything, just sit and observe, <laughs> sit and observe. So I was taking them through kind of like a strategic visioning exercise and all that. We walk out of the meeting and the intern says to me, I know what I want to do with the rest of my life. I'm like, oh, you do, do you? Yeah, I want to be a wealth manager. I'm like, okay. Yeah. We were like two weeks into the internship. He was doing a marketing internship with me, and now he wants to be a wealth manager. I'm like, where do you go with that? You know what I mean? So yeah. where, where do you go? I, I thought you were going to say, I, I know what I'm going to do, and you kind of did, but it, I thought you were going to say, I know what I'm going to do with my life, and it ain't marketing, you know? Good for you, no, kid. What Solid decision. Yeah. Solid decision. Yeah. Um, Do you know somebody that can give you a ride home? <laughs> I'm not taking you back. <laughs> sorry. Oh man, that's yeah, that's, sorry. Just, that's that's ugly, man. Um, <laughs> failing to provide enough guidance. So this one, this one to me, like, don't underestimate the time that it's going to take out of your day, and don't overestimate it either. Like, I think you can be too controlling, but it's, it's got to find that middle ground, right? Yeah. It's going to take some of your time. And I mean, you I'm, might, you might assign some of it. Yeah, it is an investment and you might, whether that's you or whether you're assigning somebody else, somebody should be assigned to be their supervisor, even if it's just to be able to check in, make sure they're okay or making sure that they've got somebody to go to if they've got a question or a, a problem. And sometimes, you know, like you and I, I mean, we're out of the office a lot. And so if we're out with clients or out and about, somebody may, has a question, you know, you need, you need somebody that's in the office also that can help them. And I think that that's going to be important, but you and I see this a lot. People just underestimate there is time. That's a commitment. And so, you know, you can't just, if you're listening and you want to hire an intern, you can't just hire them, throw them at the, at the wolves thinking they're going to do something without, like you said, Pete, giving them an investment and actually training them and doing some work. Yeah, you can't really just throw them to the lions, right? Yeah. That's our job. Yeah. We go to the lions. Yeah. Uh, we are thrown to the lions all the time. We're totally good with that. Uh, but yeah. don't do it to the intern. You're not doing them a service because this is a two-way street. You, I want to make mm. sure with anybody that, and it doesn't matter if they're an intern or an employee or, you know, it doesn't matter. I want to make sure that there's a there's a give and take and that it's not a quid pro quo necessarily. I think interns probably get more out of this than we do, and that's okay. But as long as we're doing the right thing, I mean, I'm constantly reevaluating. Is this the right thing? Is this the right thing for them? Are they building real world skills, right? Is this, are yep. they just here to save us money and uh, do the menial stuff? Men, menial, menial? Yeah. What, what's the, yeah. I don't know how to pronounce Me, it. Like a menial task. You're right. Menial, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, some of it's like, hey kid, how do I pronounce this simple word with two syllables? But you know, even that's helpful, right? Uh, but I think that's huge. Um, Even for them to help man. you, helping you with the pronouns. So if we don't Maybe understand, the pronoun. it, yeah. I think we can, what's we can my get pronoun? It right. I'm not that's sure. We can, get, you know. we can, they can help us with that. That's great. <laughs> I got to put something in the LinkedIn. I don't know what to put. Um, yeah. Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> and uh, no, you, you said something else that I think is really, really important. And that is, it's kind of a two-way street. And I think really you need to go into an internship with that feeling. So one, I, as an employer, I'm going to get something out of it, but I also have to give. So the intern gets something out of it. And I think the interns need to feel the same way. It can't be just a one way street. Otherwise it's not going to be successful. They, they have to give, even though it may uh, be uneven, like you were saying, Pete, they still have to give you something. And whether that's that creativity, the new perspective, hard work, whatever, you know, or just time. I mean, there are a lot of yeah. things that happen in the company that don't need a rocket scientist or somebody highly educated to do, but they still need right. to get done. Great yes. way for interns to start to learn kind of the ropes, right? Yeah. Um, 
And so last point for today uh, is not providing feedback and evaluation. Um, yeah. And boy, a lot of these go for employees too, don't they? Um, yeah, they sure do. But, uh, sure. you know, set up specific timeframes. You mentioned that uh, to provide mm -hmm. feedback, um, maybe a couple of weeks, monthly, after the summer, whatever it is. But it, you, your, your notes here, I'm just reading your notes. I don't know anything about this topic, but uh, no. except how to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. that's, what I, that's what I'm good at with this. Today's students need to require a lot of feedback. Um, tell me about that. What does that look like? Well, I mean, think about it. We're, you know, like you were saying, every employee needs feedback. So you got to have some kind of system to be able to evaluate. But I do think some of the younger generation now wants more feedback. And so I think you need to make sure that you're giving them the type of feedback. But if it's a learning experience, you want them to leave with, you know, some, some extra knowledge. But I think it's critical, even if there's some bad news, even if there's some things that they're not doing right, you need to help them and tell them because if you don't, the next employer may end up firing them or whatever. It's like, you know, so I, I think it's really important to correct some behavior, make sure it hopefully it works for you, but more importantly, that they learn what's expected as they go to their next uh, position. Right, and, and give that feedback honestly. I, I would say that most interns that we've worked with are really open to, they wanna know where they're maybe not performing you know that that's part of this learning process and and yeah. if you get i've had i've also had people that were so sensitive that you could really not say anything to them and that's you know it's good to know this now before you invest a whole lot in them so that's a i think those those that feedback loop becomes very important i actually ask them to give me feedback on how we're doing in terms of supporting them oh that's great and sometimes they're like i don't know but that's fair enough it's okay we still ask the question um, I think that that's a great, I think that that's really a great idea because like you said, you know, it's a two way street. Maybe we can learn too. It's like, maybe we're not doing something or maybe we're not as clear as we should be. So I think, I think that that's wonderful that you asked that, you know? Well, and isn't there a saying something about, you know, the benefits of youth are, are lost on the young. Um, yeah. And, you know, we, we kind of, we think that there's a lot of value to bring there. Now I do have to say this as we will do it in the final thoughts here. So, Let's go to our final thoughts. Uh, hey, I want to just uh, plug uh, Heidi-Designs.com. Heidi Designs uh, helps us produce this podcast. They're coming out with some, some website packages that are they're very affordable, small, medium, and large. And so go on, head over to Heidi-Designs.com, sponsoring the website. I think in the future we are going to have some more sponsors. And, of course, Bill's with Business Development Directives, and that's BDDonline.com. Yeah. Uh, yes, thank and you. Uh, of course, ClarityMarketingSupport.com. So check that out. And we always try to put comments, uh, links in the comments. Now, here's the weird thing. LinkedIn has been giving us errors lately when we try to put comments on live videos. So oh, wow. thanks, LinkedIn, for that. So we'll figure mm -hmm. that out. But uh, it's, yeah, uh, I don't know what's up with there. If, so, I can mention, if I can mention something, too, like Heidi Designs has done some things for our clients and for us. She does a great job. And I think, you know, I don't want to say... She's not inexpensive, but she's affordable. And I think I think companies can really benefit from some of that. So I hope they'll look her up as well to, well, to do some of their nice work. And, you know, I might be biased, but here's the thing. Uh, you know, if you tried the freelancers and you tried the side hustlers and the fibers and the upworks and you're ready to move up just a little bit of notch, her and her team, they do everything you can think of when it comes to marketing execution. Clarity's on the strategy side, Heidi Design's on the tactical side. You know, check it out, see what you think of the work, and uh, it's, uh, it's it, they do some great work. And again, I've been working with Heidi uh, for 33 years. Uh, she is the co-founder of the company, and she has her own company as well. So final thoughts. Um, one thing that comes to mind for me is uh, one of the biggest mistakes that I see are clients that just think that they're, I, I tried to explain this to you the other day and I don't know, it's just so hard to verbalize this, but it's like, um, they have high, uh, expectations and high objectives, but they don't have the money. And so they think, you know what we'll do marketing can't be that difficult. Let's just hire an intern for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they keep their expectations the same and they're punching downward, not based on, you know, what is it going to take in terms of resources to meet our objectives? And when I say resources, there's only two kinds, money or time. So if you don't have those two things, you're probably not going to meet your objective to begin with, but you might have to ramp that down. 
And I think that's the mistake that, that sometimes companies make is they think they're going to get the same thing out of an intern that maybe that they're going to get from somebody who's a senior level person. That's kind of an exaggerated take on it. Mm -hmm. But that's the idea. If you're, if you're punching down, you're probably not going to get what you want out of it. I really think that that's a valuable statement. And I think that, the, and I think really to your point is that's the wrong reason for hiring an intern is Absolutely. just to, like you, I mean, it just to save make money. Any, yeah. That doesn't, that just doesn't make any sense. My, my last takeaway would be, you know, if you are uh, somebody that's into professional development, if you're a mentor, if you like giving back to the community, that to me is part of the internship experience because you're helping the next generation to grow. And at the same time, hopefully it will benefit you. But like you said earlier, if it doesn't or if it's unbalanced, it's okay because look at what you've just done. And I think that that's really, really important. You know, and it brings to get it brings to mind another story that um, we were down in in way southeastern Nicaragua a few years ago doing medical aid, and we met and we stayed with for a couple of days. It's literally the last shaman of the Rama Indian tribe. It's a little tiny tribe mm -hmm. down there. They're all sustenance farmers, and Narciso is in his 80s at this time. It's mm -hmm. about 2013. And we were the first, you know, non uh, people of color to come to his, that he would allow to his uh, little, I call it a house, but it was really a, a platform with a thatched roof. Um, and, and we asked him why through our translator. And, and he said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm getting to the age where I'm, I'm, I'm worried I'm going to take this, this knowledge. He was an herbalist, right? He, he was their sole source of, of medicine, and he was extremely knowledgeable. And if I remember right, he was, he was educated in the States. And then he went, he, but he's Rama, and he went back. And, you know, he was missing a few teeth. He would wear a transistor radio around his neck with a rope. Uh, he was just a wild guy. But he was really knowledgeable. And he realized that he was going to take that knowledge with him, and it was getting to be that time. And I'm pretty sure Narciso has now left us after all these years. Um, but, boy, a couple of days there spending with him and this realization that he's taking the knowledge with him, you know, that's another reason to hire and share your knowledge. It's what we do on the program. Um, and the great thing is Georgetown University sent a whole team down there to, to live with Narciso for a year. And so a team of scientists go down there to learn from you know, toothless Indian guy who was awesome. Um, and the other point about that is, listen, you know, the fruit up here in America, we are getting just ripped off. The fruit is so much better in Central America. It is just, it's a tragedy for me. You know, I, we worked with Dole Fresh Fruit and we went on their organic banana farm and I'm eating bananas. Like, I think I can live on bananas for the rest of my life. You know, then I come up here and I'm like, this banana tastes like like 3D printed bananas. What's wrong with this? Oh. Uh, oh. So, yeah, it was it was amazing. So anyway, that's kind of an aside. But um, no, but you you made a really good point. I loved your point and you said it, which I think needs to be repeated. That's I. In my opinion, I think that's why we do this podcast. I mean, I think it's like you said, you start off always talking about, oh, we have 30 years experience. We don't know everything. But the bottom line is I, we're trying to give back to the viewers or to the listeners some of the stuff that we've known over the years or that we've learned the hard way. And so I think, I mean, that's, I, I hope that people are finding value out of it, Pete, because that's one of the reasons why we do it. I hope so too. And we get value out of it too. Someday we'll talk about the podcast strategy and what it's brought to our company. I can tell you this. We did this for 11 months uh, straight, and we can add, attribute about $220,000 just to the podcast, okay? And that's why we decided we took a break. We renamed it, because we had to, and um, and then we are now syndicated all over the country, and we're just starting up. I want you to join us. Like, come on board. And uh, I, hear, I do hear the music in my ear, and that means it's time to say goodnight, or good day, or whatever it's also about a million degrees in here right now so we got to turn the very loud ac on and so uh but it's so good to see you uh and i will see you again next week and uh thank you thank you over and out captain intern you've been listening to the b2b marketing mindset with pete monfrey and bill lowell Add to the conversation by commenting, sharing, and liking. And don't forget to subscribe and check out the links in the comments. Learn more at b2bmarketingmindset.com.